My name is Gui Ping Yan, an amateurist from NDSU. You know, Andy already mentioned that I'm an amateurist, so I will talk about nematodes. Uh, nematodes are very, very minor, uh, very tiny, uh, small worms. So they are microscopic. Yeah, you can see it with naked eye. So we only need to do specific nematode assay to identify the nematode disease. So one question is, can you go to field based on the symptom to identify the nematodes? Oh, this field is infested nematodes based on the visual symptom. Do you think you can do that? No, because the disease symptom is not specific, it's not diagnostic. So like I said, we do need to do nematode assay, you know, either pull out the roots, check the root if you can see any cyst, any structure of nematodes to tell the nematode disease, or you will get nematode out of firm roots and also out of soil. And then do microscopic observation, you can identify if you have nematode or not. There are several nematodes are important in potato. Number one is potato cyst nematode. Yeah, this is really big uh, uh, one, right? So because it's a regulated nematode species, very important for quarantine. So luckily here we do not have potato cyst nematode, like golden potato cyst nematode, pale potato uh, cyst nematode, like in uh, Washington, like uh, uh, Idaho. So Pacific Northwest in potato production area, there is a big concern. But here, or well, luckily we do not find this nematode yet. Uh, another group is uh, uh, potato rot nematode is caused by Datilanca's destructor. So this nematode can cause obvious symptoms on uh, surface of t potato tubers. You know, in dry you know, tuber, you can see the cracking surface. And uh, uh, third one I think is very important is the root knot nematode. I think if you live in southern um, uh, United States, in, in Florida, California, those area, that's a big disaster. And again, here, yeah, from our nematode assay, we may see very, very minimum, you know, number. But uh, so far, we haven't seen some uh, uh, number in the field, you know, in commercial field yet. Uh, Two other group of nematodes, root lesion nematode and stubby root nematodes. That's the one we want to talk about because we found stubby root nematode and root lesion nematode in this region. Several species of root lesion nematode could be a problem. For example, in central Minnesota, Prince Lancus penetri, yeah, root lesion nematode, it's, it has been detected in that area. And so this nematode can cause direct damage to potato. And another important th yeah, thing is it can interact with verticillium uh, fungi to cause potato early dying disease. So you may see early dying of potato. So that uh, is a big, uh, big uh, problem. Uh, in uh, addition to Prince Lancus uh, piney twine, in North Dakota uh, potato field, we also found a Prince Lancus scraminary. So we also have field trial, you know, uh, to test different cultivars for their response to Pretty Lancus uh, scriminary. Uh, another group is uh, stubby root nematode. Like I said, yeah, stubby root nematode is the number usually if you find in the field is a low number compared to root lesion nematodes. For root lesion nematode, you may see thousands of nematodes, but for stubby root nematodes, you may only see like a uh, uh, hundred. You know, lower than hundred is low number, but. Uh, uh, the importance for this nematodes because it can transmit tobacco rental virus, you know, like which cause cochrane spot disease in potato. So that's really um, important disease, you know, because it serves as a vector for virus. So our research, because they are important, our research focus on these two group of nematodes. So far, we have four research projects. So number one, you know, first one is that we are trying to identify effective cover crops uh, for managing uh, 
uh, disease in potato. For uh, the rural region nematode is pretty long as unique like this. We test uh, about 25 cover crop species and the cultivars and the see, you know, if one, you know, some of them can be used, uh, control uh, pretty long as penetrates. From our funding, we found uh, alfalfa, uh, annual run grass, and winter run. Yeah, they show the poor hosting ability. So that means they have great potential to uh, serving as you know, good cover crops. But we only test one cultivar for each uh, 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 this crop. Then right now we are doing more uh, testing to test additional uh, cover. Uh, Additional cultivars of alfalfa, annual run grass, and the winter run grass, winter run to see uh, their hosting ability and the population reduction ability to um, this rural region nematode. The second project we have, uh, oh, I want to mention, yeah, I really want to take the opportunity to thank our funding uh, agent and, uh, you know, uh, Minnesota Area to Grow Up Potato Association and also MPPGA, Northern. Plants Potato Grower Association for funding this research project. The second one is uh, we're trying to improve detection capacity and the resistant evaluation uh, for control of nematode disease in potato. This project is funded by North Dakota Specialty Crop Block Grant uh, Program. So uh, now we are developing a uh, this uh, digital droplet PCR assay and also recombinant polymerase amplification assay to detect, you know, um, nematode uh, pericoderas alleles uh, from nematodes and also directly from uh, soil DNA or field soil samples. Another important area, like I said, because it transmits uh, tobacco rental virus, it's good to detect which population carry virus, which population is, you know, do not carry virus. I think that's very important to de determine. So if we need, uh, you know, make some planting decision if the field infested with the stubby root nematode, also with, you know, virus. That means we found, if we found nematode, uh, virus on nematodes, so means, you know, it's better to avoid planting potato because it have a big risk, right? So let's, uh, another project is uh, ongoing. So uh, in greenhouse uh, study, we are also testing um, different potato cultivars for their response uh, to stubby root nematode species and also dagger nematode. So two other group of nematode I haven't mentioned. One is dagger nematode, another is, another is um, Sparrow nematode. This year we got sample from Andy, also got a, a, some sample from Dr. Julie Pachi. So we did some nematode assay. We found a high number of root region nematode and also high number of sparrow nematode. You know, just like sparrow nematode, dagger nematode, the role of this nematode, you know, for or potato is not well known. We don't know what they are doing, what population might be, you know, cause problem. So we also do some greenhouse study trying to see their effect. Uh, and a third project right now in collaboration with a scientist in uh, a USDLS lab in Prosser, Washington, we're trying to determine the difference in different population of stubby root nematodes collected from North Dakota and also from Washington state. Because from their field trial, they found, you know, virulent difference, you know, virulent difference of these uh, nematodes. So we want to see if they have some genetic difference. So we did a DNA sequencing and the phylogenetic tree analysis. We are, you know, right now is still, you know, trying to determine the difference between top population by sequencing DNA sequencing of different genomic region, see if they have some, you know, difference you know, uh, among uh, different population from different ge geographic regions. Uh, last one is uh, uh, we are is testing a different compound like uh, Vellum Prime and Momento. So uh, our combination of these two compound and the multiple application of those compound uh, see their effect for nematode management and also for occurrence by disease. Uh, this project is funded by Bayer Crop Science. We really appreciate that support. You know, for uh, years that trial. Uh, 
uh, has been done in agrar field. So my uh, my research specialist, Alison Plensent, will talk about some uh, research results from his trials, research trials. I also want to take this opportunity. Before that, I want to take this opportunity. You know, thank you our funding agents, you know, for support of our research. Also, I want to say, yeah, thank you all your support. And if you have any questions about nematode disease, or if you are interested in nematode research work, feel free to contact me. Mm -hmm.